This is part 32 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss executing stored procedures from Entity Framework Go. At the moment, we are on the employee list page. When we click view, we see the respective employee details. In the URL, we have the employee ID, which our application uses and retrieves and displays the respective employee details. Within our application code, it is this SQL employee repository that retrieves the respective employee details from the underlying database table. Within this class, we have this method, get employee. Notice it takes in employee ID as a parameter and retrieves the respective employee details. For that, at the moment, we are using a link query. Instead of this, we want to use a stored procedure. At the moment, our application is using SQL Server LocalDB. And here's the name of the server, LocalDB within parenthesis backslash MSSQL LocalDB. We want to connect to this SQL Server LocalDB from SQL Server Management Studio. So let's open SQL Server Management Studio and we specify the name of the server here, LocalDB within parenthesis backslash ms sql local db authentication type is windows authentication and then finally click the connect button we are connected and when we expand databases we see hrdb and within the tables we see our employees table now we want to create our stored procedure let's open a new query editor window and from the drop down list right here let's select our database hrdb and to create a stored procedure we use create procedure command and let's call our stored procedure SP get employee by ID. To be able to retrieve employee details by ID, we need a parameter. Let's call it ID. And this is of type integer as begin and. And here is the body of our stored procedure. Select star from employees where ID equals the incoming ID parameter. This completes our procedure code. Now let's click this execute button to have this procedure created within the HRDB database. There we go. Command completed successfully. If we now expand programmability and then stored procedures, we don't see it there. Let's refresh it. There we go. We see our stored procedure. Now let's quickly test this procedure to make sure it works as expected. So we use the execute command. The name of the procedure is SP get employee by ID and let's pass the value for ID parameter, which is two at the moment. And when we execute it, we see employee details whose ID is two. Now we created this stored procedure manually. This is fine if we are using the database first approach. With the application that we have been building as part of this course, we have been using the code first approach. With the code first approach, we really want the stored procedure to be created using any of code migration. I used SQL Server Management Studio to create this procedure to make sure we don't have any syntax errors and also to make sure the procedure works as expected. Since we are using the code first approach, let's have it created using any of core migration. So first let's delete this stored procedure. There we go. The procedure is gone. Now let's flip over to Visual Studio and launch package manager console vendor. Let's add a new migration. For that, we use add migration command and I'm going to name this migration SP get employee by ID. And before we execute this migration, we have to select our data access project from this drop down list, which is Reservages tutorial dot services. There we go. We have a new migration file that ends with the name SP get employee by ID dot CS added. And within this file, we have two methods up and down. Within this up method, we include the code to have the stored procedure created. So let's create a string variable here, name it procedure. And this variable is going to contain our stored procedure code. Let's copy it from SQL Server Management Studio and then paste it right here and format it a bit. To have this create procedure command executed on this incoming parameter migration builder, we have SQL method. To this method, we pass this variable that contains our create procedure command. When this migration is executed, up method is called and the stored procedure is created. For some reason, if we want to undo what this migration has done, we include the respective code in this down method. 
up method creates the procedure. We want the down method to drop the procedure. So let's make a copy of these two lines. And within the down method, we want to drop the procedure. So instead of create, we use drop and we don't need the rest of the lines here. So let's delete them. Our obvious next step is to execute this migration. For that, we use update database command. There we go. Command completed. And if we now take a look at SQL Server Management Studio and refresh the stored procedures folder, we see our stored procedure created. All that is left right now to do is call this procedure from Entity Framework Core. At the moment, within get employee method, we are using link to compose our SQL query. Instead of that, we want to call our stored procedure. For that, on context.employees, we have from SQL raw method. This method is in Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCode namespace. Let's bring that in. It also supports generics. We know our stored procedure is going to return an employee object back. Let's specify that using the generic parameter. And as the name implies, we use this method to execute raw SQL. We're going to use it to execute our stored procedure. The name of our stored procedure is spGetEmployeeByID. And we know it expects the ID of the employee as a parameter. Let's include a placeholder for that. And we obviously have to pass a value for that. And the employee ID value is present in this incoming ID parameter. When I hover the mouse over from SQL raw method from the IntelliSense, you can see it returns an I queryable of employee. So let's convert this to a list first. And we know we are expecting a single employee back. Let's select that single employee using links first or default method. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and see if it works as before. We are on the home page. Let's navigate to the list page. And when we click view, we see the respective employee details as before. To use stored procedures from Entity Framework Core, first we have to create the procedure itself. For that, we add a migration and then execute that migration. This creates the stored procedure. Once we have the stored procedure created, all that is left to do is call the procedure. For that, we use from SQL raw method. As the name implies, this method is used to execute raw SQL if the query can't be expressed using a link or when link is not able to generate efficient SQL query. Now, if you look at the syntax here, to pass the parameter, we're using a placeholder after the name of the stored procedure. While this syntax may look like string.format syntax, the supplied value is treated like a parameter value. And so it's not vulnerable to SQL injection. One very important point to keep in mind is never ever use concatenated or interpolated strings with from SQL raw method. This opens door to SQL injection attacks. If there is really a need to use interpolated strings, then use from SQL interpolated method. This method allows using string interpolation syntax in a way that protects against SQL injection attacks. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.